Want to speak real German from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at GermanPod101.com. Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Henrik. Welcome to a new episode of GermanPod101.com. I've got some cool stuff for you today. We're going to learn top 10 phrases your parents always say. Once you're a parent, you know, that's useful stuff. Let's go. Sei vorsichtig. Be careful. Sei vorsichtig. Sei vorsichtig. Be careful. I myself heard this a lot as a kid. I guess all the parents say this all the time because they want the children to be safe. Uh, but it's just natural for children. They want to play in the dirt. They want to play with stick. Do some stuff that's maybe a little bit dangerous. So you're always going to hear, Sei vorsichtig. Be careful. So I'm the one telling, Be careful. But yeah, I was once the one always listening to it. Be careful. Sei still. Be quiet. Sei still. Sei still. Be quiet. That's a bit more like an annoyed one if you're really sick of your kid. Like, and then you say, ah, be quiet. Sei still. Um, yeah, it's not very nice to say that's for sure, but I think uh, many parents know the situation when the kid always wants all the attention and maybe you're focused on something, so you just wanted to shut up. So you say, be quiet. Sei still. Try not to say it, it's not so nice, but at some point you just cannot stand it anymore, so you say like, oh, be quiet, sei still. Benimm dich. Behave. Benimm dich. Benimm dich. Behave. Actually, not only kids hear this from their parents. <laughs> I, I could say, like, my girlfriend tells this to me, like, oh, come on, Henrik, behave. Um, yeah, so, for little kids and for big kids. Mach deine Hausaufgaben. Do your homework. Mach deine Hausaufgaben. Mach deine Hausaufgaben. Do your homework. Actually, that's not only parents saying, also your teachers. I'm your teacher, so please, do your homework. Oh wait, I'm not giving you homework, right? I should work in that. I come up with some next time, okay? Geh ins Bett. Go to bed. Geh ins Bett. Geh ins Bett. Go to bed. Well, as I'm a young parent myself, I know that's a very hard one, because my little boy never wants to go to bed. I can understand, I like to stay up late. So probably do you, I don't know. But yeah, important to know, but I think even knowing the sentence, it doesn't really help a lot, because just by saying go to bed, I rarely see um, an effect on this. <laughs> yeah, you have to come up with something better than just saying go to bed to make a kid go to bed, really. That's my experience. Ich werde bis drei zählen. I'm going to count to three. Ich werde bis drei zählen. Ich werde bis drei zählen. I'm going to count to three. Not sure if that really works with most of the kids. One, two, three. Eins, zwei, drei. Next one. Aufhören. Stop. Aufhören. Aufhören. Stop. If you think now that also our traffic signs, the stop signs would say aufhören, no, they're also stop. But uh, it could be more like stop it. Hör auf. Aufhören. You could say both. You could say aufhören or hör auf. I think the hör auf is a bit more like, sounds strict and direct. So like, really stop it. Don't stop watching. Nicht aufhören. Schalte den Fernseher jetzt aus. Turn the TV off now. Schalte den Fernseher jetzt aus. Schalte den Fernseher jetzt aus. Turn off the TV now. Um, yeah, so I personally was never really allowed to watch that much TV, um, so I know this one. Uh, but I think it's good. Children shouldn't always just watch TV. They should rather watch YouTube, German Pot, or something like that. So turn off the TV, turn on German Pot 101. There you go. Was habe ich gerade gesagt? What did I just say? Was habe ich gerade gesagt? Was habe ich gerade gesagt? What did I just say? Classic. Oh, what did I just say? Again, probably parents are being pretty serious when they say, What did I just say? They really want to do you to do the stuff that you're supposed to do. What did I just say? Next one. Hast du deine Zähne geputzt? Did you brush your teeth? Hast du deine Zähne geputzt? 
Hast du deine Zähne geputzt? Did you brush your teeth? Um, yeah, always brush your teeth, otherwise uh, the bad bacteria come and you get bad teeth, teeth pain, tooth pain, all the stuff you don't want. So yeah, um, could be your parents thing, could be the dentist. Uh, either way, very important, always brushing your teeth in the morning, in the afternoon. Did you brush your teeth? Um, anyways, let me stop here with all the strict parent sentences. Um, I hope you liked the lesson. Subscribe to the channel or leave a comment. What could I improve? What did you like? What didn't you like? Probably the be quiet wasn't your favorite because um, yeah, you can speak up now again and do your homework. Um, okay, see you next time. Bye bye. Hi everybody, Anya here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher where I'll answer some of your most common German questions. The question for this lesson is, what is the difference between Entschuldigung, Entschuldigen Sie, and Entschuldige? Let's start from the beginning. The verb Entschuldigen can be literally translated as to take away the guilt, with die Schuld meaning the guilt. This means you're asking the other person to free you from feeling guilty for whatever you're apologizing for. Both Entschuldigung and Entschuldigen Sie, which are formal, an Entschuldige, which is informal, are used to apologize to someone. Entschuldigen Sie und Entschuldige are the imperative of Entschuldigen, which means to excuse, and Entschuldigung means apology. While both expressions can often be used interchangeably, a conversation between a parent and their child might go like this. Entschuldige dich, apologize, to which the child will reply Entschuldigung meaning apology, or more naturally in English, sorry. Entschuldigung can often stand on its own as an apology, but Entschuldigen Sie or Entschuldige often need another sentence to explain what you're apologizing for, such as Entschuldigen Sie, dass ich zu spät war, which means excuse me being late, or Entschuldigen Sie die Störung, meaning excuse the disruption. Entschuldigen Sie is formal, so this would be used at work, for example, when a colleague disrupts a meeting or, very politely, simply before asking a colleague a question. Another common phrase is Entschuldigung, das wollte ich nicht, meaning, apologies, I didn't want that to happen. This can be used in many situations and the das wollte ich nicht implies that whatever you did was an accident. This phrase can be used for anything from apologizing for dropping a plate at home to apologizing to your boss for breaking your computer at work. It's usually used when your mistake was noticed by another person and that person makes you aware of what you did. Another example is es entschuldigt, which directly translates as he's excused. This is commonly only at school when parents write a note for their children when they are sick. Their absence is then called an Entschuldigt. In casual situations, for example, if a friend is a few minutes late, many people would just shorten this phrase by saying Entschuldigung. For example, Entschuldigung, ich stand im Stau. Which means, sorry, I was caught in traffic. Increasingly, people also say just sorry in very casual or friendly situations. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Tschüss, bis zum nächsten Mal. Bye, see you next time. You are at a train station platform where you are waiting for your train. There's a small pamphlet sitting on a display case about a new train that will be introduced next year. You decide to pick up and read the pamphlet. What is the main feature and the biggest advantage of the new train?
What is the main feature and the biggest advantage of the new train? The main feature of the train is that it is propelled by magnetism. The biggest advantage is that it can reach twice the speed of any train that runs on tracks. Der Zug wird durch Magnetismus angetrieben. Er kann die doppelte Geschwindigkeit von Zügen erreichen, die auf Gleisen verkehren. Want to speak real German from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at germanpod101.com. Hi everybody, Anja here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common German questions. The question for this lesson is, what is the difference between wohnen and leben? Wohnen and leben can both be translated as to live and are often used interchangeably in German. For example, you could say ich wohne in Deutschland or ich lebe in Deutschland and both would mean I live in Germany. However, wohnen is only used when talking about your current living situation and might be closest to the English verb to reside. For example, ich wohne in einer Wohnung in einer Wohngegend means I live in an apartment in a residential area. Wohnen and Wohnung, which means apartment, have the same origin. The verb leben can be used to express this too, but is also used in the more literal sense, like er lebt, which means he's alive. Let's do some examples so you can see how to use wohnen and leben correctly. In this sentence, ich wohne in Berlin, which means I live or reside in Berlin. Wohnen is more commonly used than leben because it's talking about your address. However, both verbs are possible. The sentence, meine Katze ist sehr alt, aber sie lebt noch, which means my cat is very old, but she's still alive, uses the word Leben, because it's talking about the physical state of your cat. Here is a sentence that uses both Leben and Wohnen. Ich habe ein Jahr im Ausland gelebt und in einer WG gewohnt. This means I lived abroad for a year and lived, resided in a share house. When referring to an experience such as living abroad, Leben is commonly used because it usually implies the experience of living rather than just where your address would be in that foreign country. However, when discussing the actual living situation, we used wohnen to talk about the share house, which in German is a WG or a Wohngemeinschaft. When in doubt, the verb leben is a safe bet, as it always fits whenever you want to express to live. Wohnen, however, can only be used when expressing living in the sense of residing. It's more commonly used than the English verb to reside, though. Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Tschüss, bis zum nächsten Mal. Bye, see you next time. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Henrik. Welcome to a new episode of GermanPort101.com. Today, I have a very cool lesson for you, very interesting, very important. I'll teach you top 10 phrases you'll need to go on a date. So, if you've ever thought on maybe going out on a date with a German, this might be very interesting stuff for you. Let's go. Möchtest du mit mir Abendessen gehen? Would you like to go out to dinner with me? Möchtest du mit mir Abendessen gehen? Would you like to go out to dinner with me? So yeah, classic um, question for first date. If you not sure what you want to do with a person, really just spend time with her, getting to talk to know more about each other. That's the classic, going out for dinner. So you can ask, hey, would you like to go get dinner with me? Möchtest du mit mir Abendessen gehen? The most classic question probably for a first date, huh? Hast du dieses Wochenende Zeit? Are you free this weekend? Hast du dieses Wochenende Zeit? Are you free this weekend? So after you finished your first date probably and it's been nice, you can go step forward and ask, hey, let's meet this weekend. Um, I don't know, do some fun activity out in the woods or go shopping, whatever. But first you need to know, is this person free on the weekend? So you should ask, hey, are you free this weekend? Hast du dieses Wochenende Zeit? Möchtest du mit mir Zeit verbringen? Would you like to hang out with me? 
Möchtest du mit mir Zeit verbringen? Would you like to hang out with me? Uh, yeah, this is just really general. Also, probably if you don't know the person as well uh, as much, um, and you just want to figure out, hey, is this person interested in hanging out with me? You could ask. You want to spend time with me? Möchtest du mit mir Zeit verbringen? Or if you want to make it sound a little bit more slangy, you should ask. Möchtest du mit mir abhängen? Like really, literally, you want to hang out with me? Abhängen is hang out. So yeah, either way, the more classy is like, möchtest du mit mir Zeit verbringen? Or just like a little bit more cool. Hey, möchtest du mit mir abhängen? Also probably depends on the age. If you're rather in your 30s, 40s upwards, you would probably ask for some time on the side. Whereas when you're a teenager, just play it cool, say, möchtest du mit mir abhängen? Du bist so süß. You are so cute. Du bist so süß. You're so cute. It's a nice compliment for if like you're dating, having a date with a cute person and I don't know, you're really having fun, then you can just like let this slip. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. Like, oh, du bist so süß. Um, it's nice, it works both for boy to girl, girl to boy. Both can be cute. Du siehst gut aus. You look great. Du siehst gut aus. You look great. Yeah, this is what you say when you meet the person to go on the date and probably most person will dress up a little bit, like put some put some makeup on, put the high heels on, like in the Sia song, right? Um, and then, yeah, to appreciate all the effort the person does to look pretty, just give them a compliment. Hey, wow, you look great. This is good aus. They will appreciate. Das war ein toller Abend. That was a great evening. Das war ein toller Abend. That was a great night. Apparently, you don't say this in the beginning of the evening, you said it in the end of the evening. And if you enjoyed your time, just let the person know. Um, I, I always like to hear that people enjoy the time with me when, when I'm on a date or when, when I just spend time with friends. And then in the end, I say, hey, well, that was a cool night. And everybody knows, hey, cool, we had a good time. So, why not just saying it? Ich werde dich nach Hause fahren. I will drive you home. Ich werde dich nach Hause fahren. I will drive you home. Yeah, if you're a gentleman, you should do this, or a gentle lady, if, if you're the driver for the night, um, just offer, yeah, bring you home. Germany is a safe country, so we have nice public transport, but of course, if you're on a date, you want to you know, show, hey, oh, I, I'm a gentleman, or I'm a nice lady, I'll drive you home. I drive you home to make it easier for you. Wann sollen wir uns morgen treffen? What time shall we meet tomorrow? Wann sollen wir uns morgen treffen? What time shall we meet tomorrow? Yeah, apparently you've already set up a date, but you don't know what time you're gonna meet or where you wanna go, whatever, then just to clarify, you ask the question, hey, what, what time do we meet tomorrow? Um, I'm probably going to ask this very often because I'm not so good in remembering dates, times, all this kind of stuff disappears from my memory, so I will use, I, I'll use the sentence a lot. Wann treffen wir uns? Zu welcher Zeit? What time? Show me. Können wir uns wiedersehen? Can I see you again? Können wir uns wiedersehen? Can I see you again? Also, yeah, if you, if you like the date, if you like the person, you want to see her again, just be polite. Hey, können wir uns wiedersehen? You can ask it in a cute way and then the person probably can't even say no to you. Was hältst du von diesem Ort? What do you think of this place? Was hältst du von diesem Ort? What do you think of this place? Yeah, if you found a, if you found a nice spot, then suggest, hey, let's stay here. For example, in my city, we have, it's like a little bit in a mountainish area. Yeah, I know Swiss and Austrian people would disagree because it's like not huge mountains, it's more like hills. But anyways, if you, if you go a little bit up a hill, then there's a nice spot where you can oversee the, the entire city and um, that's where many people take their dates. So you could you could make it seem just like casually fun. Oh, hey, what do you think about this place? Not like planned long time. Even though probably the person will appreciate if you have put a little bit of thought in where you go. Um, so but yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to ask the 
debate uh, if she likes the place you took her or him, like whatever you prefer. But it already the end. I mean, you notice the sentences we use in Germany are basically the same that I used in in America or at least in English speaking countries. Um, just translated, we don't have really a lot different habits of how we ask to go out on a date. So this should be easy for you. Just find a German girl, a girl, boy, German boy or German girl. Find one. Use those phrases and. I bet you will have some success to, to go on a date. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Leave some comments. If, if you let me know about your experiences uh, on dates with Germans, maybe if you used some of the sentences, visit uh, germanpod101.com to learn even more German, to impress your dates with your German, and then I see you in the next lesson. Ciao, ciao. You've decided to study a new language. So now what? Well, you want to become fluent fast, right? Here are the top five shortcuts to learning a language. Number one, create a study schedule and set some goals. Many language learners are unorganized. Creating a schedule allows you to free up time to study consistently. Goals give you motivation and something to strive for. Number two, make it fun. If you learn how to make your study time enjoyable, chances are you'll be more inclined to study. Watch a TV show with subtitles or listen to some music. Number three, find a language partner. This is the best way to improve your conversation skills. It will help you gain fluency even faster and increase confidence when speaking. Number four, use word lists to build up a solid vocabulary. This is a great way to build up your fluency, one word at a time. Luckily, we have all the word lists you need with a range of topics from food to love. Choose whichever language you want to study and go. Number five, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Nothing helps you improve more than correcting your own errors. You're more likely to remember it correctly the next time around. Everyone makes mistakes. Don't be afraid to learn from them. There's no magical way to learn a new language overnight, but doing all of these can really help your learning process. And remember, if you're interested in getting on the fast track to fluency, sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Start learning now. Hi, Anya here. Welcome to Top Words. Today, we'll be talking about 10 phrases to use when you're angry. So the first one will be, Es geht dich nichts an. It's none of your business. Es geht dich nichts an. It's none of your business. So many people say it by themselves if, if they don't want to get too intimate about an issue. If they don't want to um, come too close to someone. So the next one is Halt den Mund. Shut up. So, I mean, it's not very nice to say to someone Halt den Mund. Lass mich in Ruhe. Leave me alone. Lass mich in Ruhe means leave me alone. So this one you say if you just want to be alone by yourself, if you don't want to be bothered by anybody. But also if you're angry and maybe had a fight with someone and then you just don't want to continue the fight anymore, you just don't want to get attacked or offended anymore and you say, okay, just leave me alone. I'll go into my room and please don't disturb or bother me. <laughs> Willst du mich veräppeln? Are you kidding me? Willst du mich veräppeln? Are you kidding me? So actually, you don't really say veräppeln. <laughs> That's not a very common way to say. Maybe they said it like that many years ago <laughs> or um, older people might still say veräppeln, was auch immer, whatever, was auch immer, whatever. So this also depends on the context. You could say that during a fight, if you want to stop arguing with someone, you say, okay, just whatever, was auch immer. Or you could say it if you are explaining something and, but I don't know, you don't really, you, you can't find the words or something and you can also say, okay, it was this and, this and that. 
doesn't really matter. If it's not that important, then you can use that too. Hör auf damit. Cut it out. Hör auf damit. Cut it out. Okay, this phrase can be used in many contexts. For example, parents might say that to their children if they're doing something wrong or, <laughs> yeah, if they don't behave well, they just say, Hör auf damit. Don't do that. Just cut it out. Stop that. Ich will nicht mit dir reden. I don't want to talk to you. Ich will nicht mit dir reden. I don't want to talk to you. So I would say in most cases you say that after a fight, you say, ich will nicht mit dir reden or ich will nicht mehr mit dir reden. I don't want to talk to you anymore because you had enough. It's actually, I would say it's pretty hurtful if someone says that to you. <laughs> It can be a long time after you had an argument with someone and maybe someone comes up to you and wants to apologize or just wants to talk to you and say, Ich will nicht mit dir reden. Ich will gerade nicht mit dir reden. I just don't want to talk to you right now. Ich bin verärgert. I'm upset. Ich bin verärgert. I'm upset. So I would say you don't say that very often if there was a situation before that made you angry, you could just talk to a person and say, I'm so upset, ich bin so verärgert. Na und? So what? Na und? So what? So na und is not very, doesn't sound very angry. It can be used in a very normal context, in a natural way. Maybe a person tells you a story, and she's so mad about something and you, you say, na und? It's not that terrible. What are you, what are you so mad about? Like, yeah, so what? So what's the matter? There is no issue <laughs> like that. So it's basically like, so what? No big deal. <laughs> Was glaubst du, wer du bist? Who do you think you are? Was glaubst du, wer du bist? Who do you think you are? So this sentence you could use if a person acts very arrogant, keeps telling you instructions or makes, uh, wants to make you obey or <laughs> something. Then you could say, was glaubst du, wer du bist? Like, who do you think you are? Yeah, don't, don't, don't treat me like this. I don't deserve it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I haven't heard many people saying this. I don't know if you use that very often, but. I think it's a funny way if, <laughs> if you really, um, yeah, if you are in that kind of situation and you say, who do you think you are? Was glaubst du, wer eigentlich wer du bist? I think that's really funny to say. <laughs> it would be funny from the outside to see that kind of situation. <laughs> not, probably not if you're within the situation. All right. So these were the 10 phrases you use when you're angry. What makes you angry? Let us know in the comments. Also, subscribe the channel if you liked it. So if you want to see more videos like this, just check us out at germanpod101.com. My name is Anja and I'll see you in the next video. Tschüss, bis zum nächsten Mal. Ein Mann sucht sich seinen Sitzplatz für seinen Flug aus. Wo ist sein Sitzplatz? Haben Sie Sitzplätze verfügbar für den Flug morgen Abend? Einen Moment bitte. Ist das für Economy-Klasse? Ja. Danke fürs Warten. Ja, wir haben noch Sitzplätze. Oh, gut. Ich hätte gerne einen Sitzplatz am Gang, bitte. Ich fürchte, alle Sitzplätze am Gang sind ausgebucht. Ich verstehe, aber ich würde nicht gerne in der Mitte sitzen. In dem Fall, würden Sie gerne einen Fensterplatz nehmen? Ja, bitte. Wo ist sein Sitzplatz? Ein Mann sucht sich seinen Sitzplatz für seinen Flug aus. Wo ist sein Sitzplatz? Haben Sie Sitzplätze verfügbar für den Flug morgen Abend? Einen Moment bitte. 
Ist das für Economy-Klasse? Ja. Danke fürs Warten. Ja, wir haben noch Sitzplätze. Oh, gut. Ich hätte gerne einen Sitzplatz am Gang, bitte. Ich fürchte, alle Sitzplätze am Gang sind ausgebucht. Ich verstehe, aber ich würde nicht gerne in der Mitte sitzen. In dem Fall, würden Sie gerne einen Fensterplatz nehmen? Ja, bitte. Hi everybody, Anja here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common German questions. The question for this lesson is, what is schon in German and how do I use it? Schon literally means yet or already, such as hast du schon gegessen, meaning have you eaten yet, or es ist schon spät, it's already late. It's a really common German expression. Idiomatically, it's often used to make a statement friendlier or add emphasis. Let's do some examples so you can learn how to use schon correctly. A sample sentence would be es ist schon okay, which simply means it's okay. Like you would say if you were forgiving someone who has offended you. It would be possible to use the sentence es ist okay, but this might seem a bit short and distant. You can think of it as saying, it's okay, it has already been forgiven and forgotten. Another example is schon gut, which literally translates to already good, it's okay, or apology accepted. This can be used as a response to someone apologizing for a minor mistake. For example, schon gut, mach dir keine Sorgen, which means, it's okay, don't worry. If you're still upset about the situation, you can use the more curt, Schon gut, which applies, okay, let's not talk about it anymore and move on. You can also use this phrase, schon besser, which literally means already better. You may hear this, for example, if you receive feedback on something like a project or a report, make changes and then present your changes to your teacher or boss. In this case, they might say, schon besser. This can come across in different ways depending on how it's said. A slow, a slow curt schon besser, emphasizing the schon, can come across as better but not good enough. But a friendly oh, es ist schon viel besser, sounds much more uplifting and positive and can translate as oh, this is already much better. If you want to step up your German game a little with your friends, you can use the phrase Die Sache ist schon gegessen, which literally means the thing has already been eaten. It's an idiom that actually means a negative incident has already been forgotten. Try using it the next time one of your German friends apologizes for something. One last insider hint is be careful not to confuse schon with schön, with an umlaut over the O. That means beautiful. Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Just bis zum nächsten Mal. Bye, see you next time. Learning a language requires a huge investment of time and often money as well. Many people are hesitant to put in the amount of effort required to become fluent. But learning a new language can be one of life's most rewarding experiences. Here are five reasons to learn a language. Number one, more opportunities. A new language can open up many new doors. You're able to work in countries other than your own. Tons of employers look to hire multilingual professionals every year. Number two, meeting new people. Get to know speakers of other languages on a more personal level. Meeting new people is one of the main reasons people begin to study a language. Making new friends is a good enough reason to start studying. Number three, Exploring a different culture. Whether you decide to live abroad or you're just taking a vacation, knowing the local language will allow you to better understand the people. This can open your eyes to not only their country, but your country as well. Learn how people view your home from their perspective. Number four, health benefits. Studying a new language actually comes with health benefits. 
Keep your brain sharp by studying every day. You'll be helping your mind fight off old age and stay fresh. Number five, discover you can do it. We've heard every excuse that people give for failing to learn a new language. Too old, not enough time, wrong genes. But you shouldn't let your excuses hold you back. You really can learn another language. You could even hold your first conversation just a few days from now. Don't make any more excuses. Just click to start speaking the language you've always wanted to learn. Sign up for your free lifetime account. No credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Stop hesitating and start learning a new language now. Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Henrik from GermanPop101.com and uh, welcome to a new episode. I got some really cool stuff going on today. I'm gonna um, tell you about the top 10 sightseeing spots in Germany. So whenever you come around, make sure you hit those spots. Allianz Arena. Allianz Arena. Allianz Arena. Allianz Arena. Können Sie mir sagen, wo sich die Allianz Arena befindet? Können Sie mir sagen, wo sich die Allianz Arena befindet? Could you tell me where the Allianz Arena is located? The Allianz Arena, that's the stadium of a football club Bayern Munich and I know many people would disagree with me out there, but that's really not the coolest club. So, better watch out for where's the Visa Stadium located. That's the one from Werder Bremen. Much better team. Brandenburger Tor. Brandenburg Gate. Brandenburger Tor. Brandenburg Gate. Das Brandenburger Tor ist eine Sehenswürdigkeit in Berlin. Das Brandenburger Tor ist eine Sehenswürdigkeit in Berlin. The Brandenburg Gate is a sightseeing spot in Berlin. Yep, very famous one. I would guess probably the most famous German sightseeing spot. This huge gate, like uh, right in the middle of Berlin. Very cool. It's close by many other sightseeing spots. So once you go to Berlin, really make sure you uh, check that out. It's also where the Berlin Wall used to go along. So it's a cool one. Europa Park. Europa Park. Europa Park. Or maybe Europe Park. Im Europa Park kann man alleine oder mit der Familie viel Spaß haben. Im Europa Park kann man alleine oder mit der Familie viel Spaß haben. In the Euro Park, uh, you can have lots of fun alone or with your family. Yeah, to be really honest, I've never really been there. So see, also shame on me. I'm <laughs> showing you some sightseeing spots that I don't even know about. Um, but I've heard about it. It's supposed to be very cool. Kölner Dom, Cologne Cathedral. Kölner Dom, Cologne Cathedral. Der Kölner Dom ist einfach atemberaubend. Der Kölner Dom ist einfach atemberaubend. The Cologne Cathedral is simply stunning. That's true. Fun fact about the Cologne Cathedral. At one point in history, I think about 1600 something, it was the tallest building in the entire world. Yeah, it's a very cool, cool building. Like it pops out of the Cologne uh, silhouette. If, if, if you're in Cologne, you can almost see it from everywhere. It's, it's a cool place to go. Unfortunately, almost always covered uh, in some construction things because they always have to keep it in good shape. But it's a cool place. Oktoberfest. 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 Beim Oktoberfest sollte man unbedingt Weißbier probieren. Beim Oktoberfest sollte man unbedingt Weißbier probieren. During Oktoberfest, you should definitely try Weißbier. Yeah, who hasn't heard about Oktoberfest? One of the coolest things Germany has to offer, I would say. Uh, right in the heart of Munich, every September, oddly. So, I don't know why it's not called Septemberfest. Yeah, I wouldn't go for the uh, Weissbier. It's more the Helles, so-called. Like, the, um, yeah, some kind of German lager. What you drink there, but yeah, you have this huge one liter max. Um, and everybody gets very uh, yeah, happy after a few of those and um, it's a cool thing if you haven't checked it out that should be on your um, to-do list of life uh, something very particular uh, it's a lot of fun you meet random people from all over the world they have one weekend it's even called the Italian weekend so if you're from Italy maybe that's the one you should check out but yeah Oktoberfest good stuff if you like beer if you are not really into all the party stuff then don't go check out Oktoberfest also, it's not really a sightseeing spot, it's more like a festival over four uh, weeks, maybe three weeks, I think three weeks. 
But yeah, if you are up for that, go to uh, go to Bavaria, go to Munich. Reichstag. 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 Die Architektur des Reichstags ist einfach atemberaubend. Die Architektur des Reichstags ist einfach atemberaubend. The architecture of the Reichstag is simply stunning. It's also it's pretty cool. It's close to Brandenburg Gate. As I said previously, like uh, some of the big sites of Berlin are very close to each other, so you could just walk there in I don't know, probably three minute foot walk. Um, you can also go in and um, book a tour and go up in the in the top in this glass um, yeah ceiling, and then you would look down to where all the politicians sit every day doing politician stuff. Cool thing to check out. Berlin again. Rotenburg ob der Tauber. Rotenburg ob der Tauber. Rotenburg ob der Tauber. Rotenburg ob der Tauber. Rotenburg ob der Tauber ist eine weitestgehend erhaltene mittelalterliche Stadt. Rotenburg ob der Tauber ist eine weitestgehend erhaltene mittelalterliche Stadt. Rotenburg ob der Tauber ist a largely preserved medieval town. Um, yeah, again, shame on me, one of those I haven't been to yet, but my parents went there just, I don't know, one or two years ago. They really like it. Um, it's, it's something special that you have here in, in many European countries, but also especially in Germany, that you have a lot of medieval towns that are, that, uh, are well preserved. So if you're into all this old stuff, <laughs> then that's the place you should check out. Rotenburg ob der Tauber. What a weird name for a city, isn't it? Yeah, even, even in Germany, don't think that's not why. There's no idea who came up with that. Yeah, probably some medieval old dude didn't know what to name his city, I guess. Schloss Sans Souci. Sans Souci Castle. Schloss Sans Souci. Sans Souci Castle. Schloss Sans Souci ist ein Sommerschloss. Schloss Sans Souci ist ein Sommerschloss. Sans Souci Castle is a summer castle. Um, also one of those places I actually have never been. It's very close to Berlin, a bit west, so yeah, if, if you want to like walk your way through this list, you already have three sites very close uh, to each other. Um, my parents went, they said it's also a very nice place, you, they have lots of gardens, you can walk in the gardens, um, so a good thing to do with your family also. I um, I think it's very similar to the um, castle of Versailles uh, in France. Of course, this one is a bit more famous, probably a bit bigger. But from the style, it's kind of um, what you have in Versailles. So, but yeah, make sure to come in summer. As I said, it's a summer castle, so not so cool to be there on a rainy day, I'd say. Starnberger See. Lake Starnberg. Starnberger See. Lake Starnberg. Der Starnberger See ist ein See in Bayern. Der Starnberger See ist ein See in Bayern. Lake Starnberg is a lake in Bavaria. Did I actually tell you I recently moved to Bavaria, right into the heart of Munich? So um, that's one of the places I really want to check out. I guess it's very beautiful, a bit south of Munich, and on your way right to Italia. Cool place to hang out there. I think there are lots of fancy houses next to the lake. So all the posh people of Munich um, might live there. Yeah, if you like nature stuff or probably, I don't know if you can go fish there or something, then that's definitely one of the sites you should check out. Nürnberger Christkindelsmarkt. Nürnberg Christmas Market. Nürnberger Christkindelsmarkt. Nürnberg Christmas Market. Der Nürnberger Christkindelsmarkt ist einer der schönsten Weihnachtsmärkte in ganz Deutschland. The Nuremberg Christmas Market is one of the most beautiful Christmas markets in Germany. Yeah, true. I um, personally, of course, am very proud of the Christmas market of my hometown. Uh, so we have this Christmas forest. Um, there's like a square, and uh, they, they every winter they chop some trees and put them there, like these Christmas trees. And then if you go in, it really feels like in a in a forest, and you get some molded hot wine there. But yeah, uh, for sure, Nuremberg Christmas Market also pretty cool. A thing you could only check out in winter. Don't go in summer to Nuremberg and think you will have the Christmas market, okay? Uh, usually starting probably by the end of November, early early December. You know when Christmas time is. Anyways, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. I hope you get excited about uh, seeing some of the sightseeings I told you about. Uh, many of them I've seen, many of them are really cool. Others I still have to check out myself. 
Um, see you next time. Subscribe to the channel, leave some comments, and see you then. Hi, everybody. Anja here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common German questions. The question for this lesson is, what's the difference between Nein, Nicht, and Kein? Nein means no, and is used in the same way as the English no, such as Nein danke, no thank you, or Wohnst du in Berlin? Nein, ich wohne in Hamburg. Do you live in Berlin? No, I live in Hamburg. Nicht means not, and is used to make a sentence negative. Ich wohne nicht in Berlin. Ich auch nicht. Mean, I don't live in Berlin. Me neither, respectively. Kein is also used to make a sentence negative. However, it's only used before nouns with an indefinite article, such as e or an in English, or no article at all. In these cases, kein replaces the need for nicht. For example, ich habe einen Hund. Ich habe keinen Hund, which means I have a dog and I don't have a dog, respectively. The second sentence literally means I have a dog. Let's do some more examples so you can learn how to use nein, nicht, and kein more effectively. Nein on its own is often considered rude, so people add danke in order to make the sentence nein danke, which means no thank you. For example, nein danke, ich habe schon gegessen meaning, no thank you, I have already eaten. If someone asks you if you ever have been somewhere such as Warst du schon mal in Rom? Have you ever been to Rome before? Simply saying the word nein might signal to the person you're talking to that the conversation has ended. So it may be better to say Nein, noch nicht, which literally means no, never, so far. With the word nicht, a common expression is noch nicht, which means not yet. It's often the answer to a question containing the word schon, which means already or yet. For example, hast du den Film schon gesehen? Noch nicht. Have you seen the movie yet? Not yet. However, it can also be used to show your planning on doing something. For example, warst du heute einkaufen? Noch nicht. Aber ich gehe gleich, which means, have you gone shopping today? Not yet, but I will go soon. An example with kein would be, ich habe keine Lust, which is a common expression meaning, I don't want to, or I don't feel like it. It's often used to complain about having to go to work, school, or a similar commitment, such as in, ich habe wirklich keine Lust auf Arbeiten heute, which means, I really don't feel like working today. It would be considered rude to use it as a direct reply to someone asking if you want to do something. In that case, it would be better to say, ich fühle mich nicht nach Arbeiten heute, which also means, I don't feel like working today, but implies that it's because you don't feel well. If you feel like you've got it and really want to challenge yourself, you can use all three in the same sentence with this phrase. Nein, ich kann nicht, ich habe keine Zeit, which means, no, I can't, I don't have time. Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Tschüss, bis zum nächsten Mal. Bye, see you next time. To master a new language and understand everything as soon as you hear it, to read with just a quick glance and speak smoothly without thinking, you need to review. Here are our top five review tactics. Number one, listen to examples over and over again. By listening closely and often, you start to pick up the rhythm of a language, as well as correct pronunciation from a native speaker. Use our line-by-line -line feature that lets you both listen and read along. Use this tool to practice as much as possible. Number two, use our voice recording tool to master perfect pronunciation. Record yourself and compare it against the native speaker. If you sound different, then repeat after the native speaker until you're able to match them. Use our voice recording feature, which makes recording super easy. Number three, master your recorded conversations. 
Record conversations and go over them again and again. Master entire conversations and repeat them line by line. Use any of the dialogues available for download on our website. These come with transcripts of the entire conversation. Number four, use mobile devices to reinforce previously learned conversations. Constant review is the best way to progress in your language studies. Download the recorded dialogue to your mobile device and incorporate it into your music playlist. Quick reviews throughout the day effectively reinforce what you've learned. Number five, read with line-by-line -line notes. Read along with a native speaker to really master pronunciation and natural intonation. You should start slow at first, then slowly increase your speed. Your pronunciation will become more natural. You will also see that your ability to understand fluent speakers will greatly increase. You'll be able to improve your communication skills using these five simple review techniques. Increase your understanding of your target language. And remember, if you're interested in getting all these review tools, sign up for your free lifetime account. No credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. And start reviewing more every day. You are at a train station where you're heading to the lost and found office to retrieve a lost passport. According to an email you received from the train company, what things do you need to provide to the staff? What things do you need to provide to the staff? The email says that you need to present proof of identification and to pay a small fee. Identifikationsnachweis, eine geringe Gebühr. Hi everybody, Anja here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common German questions. The question for this lesson is, what are the differences between du, dich, sie, and ihnen? Lowercase du means you informally, and dich means yourself or you as the direct object. Capital Z means you formally, and ihnen is you as the formal indirect object. Let's go over du and sie first. Du is used to address children and teenagers up to the age of 16 as well as family and friends. Sie is used to address adults you don't know well in addition to teachers, bosses, colleagues and everybody you come in contact with as part of a business transaction. Let's do some examples so you understand the differences between du, dich, sie and ihnen more easily. The expression freust du dich auf den Urlaub, which means are you looking forward to the vacation, comes from the verb sich freuen, meaning to be glad or to be happy. It's a reflexive verb and the pronoun sich changes according to the subject. For example, ich freue mich, which means I am happy or I am glad. Du freust dich would be you're happy and er freut sich would be he's happy. Freust du dich auf den Urlaub? is a common question, especially around school holidays. Teachers might ask this to the children in their class or friends might ask each other if they've booked a vacation somewhere. Another sample sentence is Geht es Ihnen gut? which means Are you well? This is used to address someone formally and ask how they feel. It's not to be confused with a standard greeting Wie geht es Ihnen? meaning, how are you? Geht es Ihnen gut would be used if you noticed someone looks like they're not feeling well or might be in trouble. 
A final example is Gehen Sie, wenn es Ihnen nicht passt, which literally means if you're not okay with it, leave. This sentence uses both sie and ihnen. Gehen Sie is the formal imperative leave and jemanden nicht passen, not to fit someone, is a common expression used to describe a piece of clothing that doesn't work on someone. For example, das Kleid passt mir nicht. The dress doesn't fit me. It's also used in non-ideal situations such as Morgen passt mir nicht, meaning tomorrow is not good for me. There are two common phrases using du and sie and dich and ihnen respectively. The first one is was machst du, informally, or was machen sie, formally, both meaning what are you doing. The other phrase is wie geht es dir, informally, and wie geht es ihnen, formally, both meaning how are you. Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Tschüss, bis zum nächsten Mal. Bye, see you next time. Hi, my name is Anja. Welcome to German Top Words. Today you'll be learning five sentence patterns for beginners. Mir ist nach. Mir ist nach. I feel like. Mir ist nach. I feel like. Mir ist nach Kino. Mir ist nach Kino. I feel like going to the cinema, but a more common way to say is um, ich habe Lust auf or if you want to say it with a slang, <laughs> um, you can say ich habe Bock auf anything. Ich frage mich ob. Ich frage mich ob. I wonder if. Ich frage mich ob. I wonder if. Ich frage mich ob. Unser Lehrer krank geworden ist. I wonder if our teacher got sick. Yeah, so translated it would mean I asked myself if our teacher got sick. Because you don't really say ich wundere, um, which means wonder. Um, that's not a common way to say in German if you want to express that you're wondering about something. Es sieht danach aus als ob. Es sieht danach aus als ob. It seems like, es sieht danach aus als ob, it seems like, es sieht danach aus als ob es gleich regnen wird, es sieht danach aus als ob es gleich regnen wird, it seems like it would soon start to rain, wenn es nach mir gehen würde, wenn es nach mir gehen würde, if it were up to me, wenn es nach mir gehen würde, if it were up to me, wenn es nach mir gehen würde, hätte ich schon längst gekündigt. If it were up to me, I would have already resigned. So you, you, you say it if you want to express that um, if no one has something against it or if I'm allowed to decide, then I would do it like this and that. Wenn es nach mir gehen würde. Kannst du mir mehr über erzählen? Kannst du mir mehr über erzählen? Can you tell me more about? Kannst du mir mehr über erzählen? Can you tell me more about? For example, if someone went to New Zealand and you really want to um, go to New Zealand too someday and you want to learn more about the country, then you can be like, Kannst du mir mehr über Neuseeland erzählen, about your journey um, in New Zealand, because, yeah, I'm really interested and I want to know about the uh, places to go and the, some places that you recommend. So, yeah, that would be an example to use this phrase. Kannst du mir mehr über deutsches Bier erzählen? Kannst du mir mehr über deutsches Bier erzählen? Can you tell me more about German beer? Thank you everyone for watching. This was our lesson for today. Five sentence patterns for beginners. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and make sure to like it. <laughs> also, don't forget to check out our website germanpod101.com. See you in the next video. Want to speak real German from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at germanpod101.com. Hi everybody, Anja here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common German questions.
The question for this lesson is, what are the different versions of ein and eine and how do I use them? Ein and eine are indefinite articles like a and an in English. You can also use these articles for the word one, but only when you're counting. For example, ein Hund, one dog, or eine Katze, one cat. They shouldn't be confused with the actual number for one, which is eins. Ein is used for masculine and neuter nouns. One man is masculine, so it would be ein Mann, while one house is neuter, so it would be ein Haus. Eine is used for feminine nouns. Eine Frau, for example, would be one woman. The indefinite article changes according to the case of the noun. There are four cases, nominative, accusative, genitive, and dative. If the noun is in the nominative case, the articles are ein in masculine and neuter and eine in feminine. For example, es ist ein schönes Haus, meaning it's a nice house. If the noun is in the accusative case, it's einen, masculine, eine, feminine and ein, neuter. An example would be, ich rufe einen Kollegen an. I am calling a male colleague. If the noun is in the genitive case, the articles change to eines, masculine neuter, and eine, feminine. For example, es ist das Auto einer Freundin, meaning it's the car of a female friend. If the noun is in the dative case, the articles change to einem, masculine neuter, and eine, feminine. For example, Das Land gehört einem Unternehmen, meaning the land belongs to a neuter company. The accusative case is the only case in which the masculine and the neuter indefinite articles are different from each other. For feminine indefinite articles, eine in nominative and accusative or eine in genitive and dative are the only options. If you feel like you have a handle on indefinite articles, try this fun sentence. Ich habe einen Hund, eine Katze und ein Meerschweinchen, which means I have a dog, a cat and a guinea pig. Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Tschüss, bis zum nächsten Mal. Bye, see you next time. Okay, hey everyone. Today we'll be talking about the five most popular German bands. Rammstein. Rammstein, a hard rock band. Rammstein, so Rammstein, Rammstein, a hard rock band. Rammstein ist eine international sehr bekannte deutsche hard rock band. Rammstein is an internationally well known German hard rock band. Tokyo Hotel, Tokyo Hotel, Tokyo Hotel, a rock band. Tokyo Hotel, Tokyo Hotel, a rock band. Tokyo Hotel ist eine deutsche Rockband, die 2001 gegründet wurde. Tokyo Hotel ist eine deutsche Rockband, die 2001 gegründet wurde. Yes, yeah, so I remember them. They were very famous when I was a teenager and um, they um, had like all these 13 year old girls fans. <laughs> And yeah, they are really crazy about them, but yeah, that's it. <laughs> Die Ärzte. Die Ärzte. Die Ärzte, a punk band. Die Ärzte, a punk band. Die Ärzte sind eine der bekanntesten deutschen punk rock bands. Die Ärzte sind eine der bekanntesten deutschen punk rock bands. The Ärzte is one of the best known German punk rock bands. Yes, yeah, so they're a very uh, long existing too. They came out with this um, very famous song. It's very old. It was called Männer sind Schweine. <laughs> Men are pigs. <laughs> And in when uh, men as in Schweine, <laughs> like, yeah, it was, um, they were talking very bad 
about men. Yeah, they became very famous with it, so. Scorpions. Scorpions. Scorpions, a rock band. Scorpions. Scorpions, a rock band. Rudolf Schenker is das einzige konstante Mitglied der Scorpions. The Scorpions' only constant member has been Rudolf Schenker. Um, I don't know them that well. I didn't even know they were a German band. Modern Talking. Modern Talking, a pop band. Modern Talking. Modern Talking, a pop band. Die sehr bekannte Band Modern Talking besteht aus Dieter Bohlen und Thomas Anders. Die sehr bekannte Band Modern Talking bestand aus Dieter Bohlen und Thomas Anders. The very famous band Modern Talking consisted of Dieter Bohlen and Thomas Anders. Dieter Bohlen is actually uh, one of the judges of um, Deutschland sucht den Superstar, <laughs> which is um, similar to American Idol or the singing competition show. Okay, so these were the five most popular German bands. If you have any German bands that you like, let me know. I'd be very curious about it. Don't forget to check out our website, German Pod. 101.com. See you in the next video. Bye! Hi everybody, Anja here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common German questions. The question for this lesson is, why does German use two different words for joke? Both Witz and Scherz can be translated as joke. Witz is used in the actual sense of telling a joke and a scherz can be a prank or an ironic comment. A good insider tip is to know the phrase war ein scherz. It roughly translates to it was a joke and is often added after saying something that could potentially offend someone. It's used to either clarify that you're not being serious or even to retract the statement. So if you hear this, don't take what the person said to heart. Let's do some examples so you can use Witz and Scherz correctly. The phrase sehr witzig means very funny. It's often used ironically when you don't find something funny or when you're trying to tease someone. Another example would be Du bist heute aber zu Scherzen aufgelegt. This means you're in a silly mood today. It literally translates to you've been set up to crack jokes today. The aba meaning but is used for emphasis. An additional good phrase to know is Du machst Witze. This means are you kidding? Accompanied by a facial expression of disbelief. This might be used when hearing surprising or even shocking news, though nothing too serious, like death or illness from a friend. An interesting fact is that there are two colloquial verbs based on Witz and Scherz. The first is witzen, meaning to quip, and the second is scherzen, meaning to joke. Both are used when people are being silly and joking around a lot. If you feel like you're getting the hang of German humor, you can try this fun phrase. Hast du einen Clown gefrühstückt? This literally means, have you eaten a clown for breakfast? It's an ironic expression that actually means, well, aren't you being funny or silly today? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Tschüss, bis zum nächsten Mal. Bye. You are exiting a train station when a big notice posted on the bulletin board catches your attention. The notice highlights permanent changes made to the train schedule. How will trains on Fridays be affected?
How will trains on Fridays be affected? Trains on Fridays will now start at 6 a.m. and will end at 1 a.m. Alle Fahrten ab 6 Uhr bis 1 Uhr. Hey guys, this is Anja. Welcome to German Top Words. Today you'll be learning 10 ways to motivate yourself when learning German. Ich kann mir vorstellen, eines Tages Deutschland zu bereisen oder dort zu leben. Ich kann mir vorstellen, eines Tages Deutschland zu bereisen oder dort zu leben. I imagine that one day I will visit or live in Germany. So, if you want to live in Germany, I recommend you to live in Berlin. <laughs> I lived there for two years and it's a very multicultural city <clears throat> where lots of um, different ethnicities come together and yeah, it's just very... In, in the summer it's a really um, great place to be. Everyone is very relaxed and chilled and you can just <laughs> hang out outside and drink some beer and yeah, whatever, have some fun. Ich studiere auch andere Aspekte der Kultur, was einen anspornenden Effekt beim Deutsch lernen hat. Ich studiere auch andere Aspekte der Kultur, was einen anspornenden Effekt beim Deutsch lernen hat. I study other aspects of the culture too which makes it more rewarding to study German. Yeah, so if you're interested in the German culture, you could check out um, different museums or um, study about classical music or go to the theater, which is very also cheap, especially for students. You can just go there for a few euros and yeah, enjoy some nice historical theaters. <laughs> Ich mag es, witzige Wörter auf Deutsch zu suchen. Ich mag es, witzige Wörter auf Deutsch zu suchen. I like to search funny words in German. So, yeah, German has um, these very long words that are built out of, I don't know, maybe three or two to four words. <laughs> um, like, I don't know, for example, just auf Wiedersehen, if you say goodbye, um, in a formal way, you say Auf Wiedersehen, which is Auf and Wiedersehen, and Wiedersehen is pretty long. Um, I was also asked if it's not like hard to write it every time, these long words. Um, or there are also funny sounding words like Streichholzschächtelchen. I think to not German speaking people, these or sounding words are um, pretty funny. <laughs> ich habe mich mit Leuten angefreundet, die Deutsch sprechen. Ich habe mich mit Leuten angefreundet, die Deutsch sprechen. I make friends with people who speak German. That's probably the best way to learn German if you can just use it naturally in reality if you get the chance to speak um, in their language. I mean, of course, it's always good to, to have German lessons and to learn about grammar and stuff, to actually be able to use it and um, also to speak a lot by yourself. That should be really, really helpful. Ich schaue mir YouTube-Videos von anderen Leuten an, die mit Erfolg Deutsch gelernt haben. Ich schaue mir YouTube-Videos von anderen Leuten an, die mit Erfolg Deutsch gelernt haben. I watch YouTube videos of other people who have successfully learned German. I don't know anyone who successfully learned German, but um, <laughs> it would also be really helpful since German is a really um, hard language to learn, I think. As a native um, German speaker, I think yeah, the grammar and everything is pretty complicated um, compared to other languages. So, yes, it would be really good to um, get some tips um, from people who learned it. Ich habe Spaß daran, Deutsch anzuwenden, um in deutschen Restaurants zu bestellen. Ich habe Spaß daran, 
Deutsch anzuwenden, um in deutschen Restaurants zu bestellen. I enjoy using German to order at German restaurants. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I think <clears throat> you should go to German restaurants and um, order some schnitzel or um, like typical German um, dishes like uh, goulash or um, Rinderbraten or uh, yeah, with Klöße. Have some sauerkraut with Würstchen and a beer. <laughs> Yes, that would be some really, really uh, typical German meal to have. Yeah, it's gonna be a good portion. Ich schaue deutsche Filme und TV-Shows und freue mich, wenn ich ein Wort oder einen Satz verstehe. Ich schaue deutsche Filme und TV-Shows und freue mich, wenn ich ein Wort oder einen Satz verstehe. I watch German movies and TV shows and enjoy the feeling when I can understand a word or a sentence. Oh, I actually know people who learn German um, from German soap operas. <laughs> They really use um, easy words and, you know, just casual um, daily situations. I think that's a good, helpful way to learn or understand phrases and words. So I don't know if they're still going on, but um, there is soap operas called GZSZ, Gute Zeiten, Schlechte Zeiten, or Marienhof, or Verbotene Liebe. I mean, they're not very um, exciting, to be honest, but um, I think it's a really good way to, to learn German and to understand words. Nach dem Abendessen schreibe ich einen Tagebucheintrag auf Deutsch. Nach dem Abendessen schreibe ich einen Tagebucheintrag auf Deutsch. After dinner, I write in my journal in German. I think that's a really good way to um, practice your German skills as well. Because, yeah, you actually get to write what you really think and what you really want to say. So you might look up words and, um, yeah, learn new vocabularies and... Yes, really learn how to express your own feelings and what you want to say. Ich höre deutsche Songs und Podcasts, auch wenn ich schlafe. Ich höre deutsche Songs und Podcasts, auch wenn ich schlafe. I listen to German songs and podcasts even when I'm sleeping. Yeah, so listening to German phrases and especially music, I think it's a very good way to um, take in the the German um, pronunciations, and it's a good way to learn, to pick up vocabularies, and yeah, I think you're, you're, um, you will learn subconsciously, so yes, I think it would be a really effective way to learn it. Ich lerne jeden Tag im Zug mit Vokabelkarten nützliche Wörter und Phrasen. Ich lerne jeden Tag im Zug mit Vokabelkarten nützliche Wörter und Phrasen. I practice useful words and phrases with flashcards every day on the train. Yes, I think that's a very old way to practice the to practice words and a language. I used to do that too. <laughs> When I was learning English, we al always had those um, vocabulary tests, so therefore I also had my flashcards and yeah, went over them all the time and try to say them by myself so yeah i just think it's it's a very good way to to memorize those words if you just go over them a hundred times so <laughs> that you finally learned them and that they're stuck in your head and that you don't forget them all right guys thank you so much for watching um please tell me what motivates you in order to learn german um don't forget to check out our website germanpod101.com and I hope to see you in our next lesson. Bye! Hi everybody, Anja here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher where I'll answer some of your most common German questions. The question for this lesson is What does Ja mean in German and how do I use it? The German language uses a lot of little words and sentences to slightly change the tone. It could be to add emphasis to make a statement less direct or less harsh. 
to comfort someone, to acknowledge a fact, to express surprise, and more. One of these words is ja. Ja normally means yes. However, when used in the middle of a sentence, the meaning is different. For example, in the sentence Du sprichst ja auch Deutsch, meaning you speak German too. It cannot be translated as yes. There is no direct translation. Here, it's just emphasizing that the person you're speaking to can also speak German. Break it down so you can understand how to use ja more easily. Let's use this scenario as an example. A German and a non-German person are talking about an exam they took in German. The German person says, Ich fand den Test einfach, which means, I found the exam easy. The non-German person might respond with, Du sprichst ja auch Deutsch, meaning, well, of course you would, since you can speak German. Let's do another example, with Ich gehe ja schon, meaning, I'm already going. You would use the sentence if someone has repeatedly asked you to do something. The ja refers to the fact that you know you have been asked a number of times and can be translated as, okay, okay, I'm going, stop nagging me. Ja can also be used in the following scenario. Ist ja auch so, meaning, well, that's how it is. This time, the ja makes the sentence sound a bit defiant. For example, if someone says, du beschwerst dich oft über Staus auf der Autobahn, meaning, you often complain about traffic jams on the highway, the other person might, in a slightly annoyed tone, reply with, ist ja auch so. Well, that's just how it is. Let's do one last example. Imagine you're feeling hungry and you remember there are some cookies in the kitchen. However, when you open the jar, there are none left. You might say, na nu, die Kekse sind ja schon alle, meaning, oh, the cookies are all gone already. In this case, ja adds an element of surprise. How was this lesson? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Tschüss, bis zum nächsten Mal. Bye, see you next time. Learning a language requires a huge investment of time and often money as well. Many people are hesitant to put in the amount of effort required to become fluent. But learning a new language can be one of life's most rewarding experiences. Here are five reasons to learn a language. Number one, more opportunities. A new language can open up many new doors. You're able to work in countries other than your own. Tons of employers look to hire multilingual professionals every year. Number two, meeting new people. Get to know speakers of other languages on a more personal level. Meeting new people is one of the main reasons people begin to study a language. Making new friends is a good enough reason to start studying. Number three, Exploring a different culture. Whether you decide to live abroad or you're just taking a vacation, knowing the local language will allow you to better understand the people. This can open your eyes to not only their country, but your country as well. Learn how people view your home from their perspective. Number four, health benefits. Studying a new language actually comes with health benefits. Keep your brain sharp by studying every day. You'll be helping your mind fight off old age and stay fresh. Number five, discover you can do it. We've heard every excuse that people give for failing to learn a new language. Too old, not enough time, wrong genes. But you shouldn't let your excuses hold you back. You really can learn another language. You could even hold your first conversation just a few days from now. Don't make any more excuses. Just click to start speaking the language you've always wanted to learn. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Stop hesitating and start learning a new language now. Hi everyone, welcome to German Top Words. Today we'll be learning about 10 phrases to help you in an emergency. All right. Bitte rufen Sie die Polizei. Bitte rufen Sie die Polizei. Call the police, please. Yeah, so if you got caught in an emergency, <laughs> then you can just say to someone, call the police, please. Haben Sie Fieber? 
Haben Sie Fieber? Do you have a fever? So if someone's not feeling well or looks really sick or um, if you're at the doctor, then he might ask. Haben Sie Fieber? Ich habe meinen Reisepass verloren. Ich habe meinen Reisepass verloren. I lost my passport. I once thought I had lost my passport, but then luckily I found it in my suitcase, so I was safe. Nothing happened. <laughs> ich glaube, ich habe etwas Schlechtes gegessen. Ich glaube, ich habe etwas Schlechtes gegessen. I think I ate something bad. So when you're not feeling well, when you have a stomach ache, then you would say, Ich glaube, ich habe etwas Schlechtes gegessen. Ich brauche einen Arzt. Ich brauche einen Arzt. I need a doctor. If you want someone to um, call an ambulance, then you would be like, Ich brauche einen Arzt. But that sounds really, really urgent. Ich finde den Weg nicht zurück zu meinem Hotel. Ich finde den Weg nicht zurück zu meinem Hotel. I can't find the way back to my hotel. So if you're, for example, in a foreign country and you took a walk and um, you got lost suddenly, then you could go to some person and say, <laughs> Ich finde den Weg nicht zurück zu meinem Hotel. Can you help me please? Können Sie mir helfen? Gibt es eine Apotheke in der Nähe? Gibt es eine Apotheke in der Nähe? Is there a pharmacy nearby? So in Germany there are many different pharmacies. They're called Apotheke, like Sonnenapotheke or something Apotheke. <laughs> They all have different names. And it's also a very common occupation to be an Apotheker, to be a pharmacist. Ich habe mich verlaufen. Ich habe mich verlaufen. I'm lost. And then you could add, can you help me please? <laughs> Uh, können Sie mir helfen? Ich brauche einen Krankenwagen. Ich brauche einen Krankenwagen. I need an ambulance. When something really, really bad happened, like you broke your leg or you're suffering under really, really bad pain, then you would say, ich brauche einen Krankenwagen. Or, könnt ihr einen Krankenwagen rufen? Can you please call an ambulance? Bitte rufen Sie die Feuerwehr. Bitte Rufen Sie die Feuerwehr. Please call the fire department. If you see a fire somewhere, if your house is burning, then say to someone, Bitte rufen Sie die Feuerwehr! Or just Feuerwehr! <laughs> okay, so these were 10 phrases to help you in an emergency. I hope you will never use them. <laughs> I don't want you to get caught in an emergency. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Don't forget to check out our website, germanpod101.com. Bye. Peace. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Anja here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common German questions. The question for this lesson is, what is the difference between Urlaub and Ferien? Ferien and Urlaub can both be translated as vacation or holiday. Urlaub originally comes from the verb erlauben, or to allow, meaning you were asking to be allowed to leave work. Ferien is used to refer to a period of free time with no school or work. These vacations have been set by the government, for example, summer holidays, Christmas holidays, Easter holidays, and so on. Urlaub is used to refer to time an individual takes off from work which is not set by the country or state. It's also used to refer to an actual vacation. For example, a father and mother might apply for Urlaub or time of work so that they can go in den Urlaub on vacation with their children. Let's do some examples so you can see how to use Ferien and Urlaub correctly. In den Sommerferien hat die Schule zu. For example, means The school is closed during the summer holidays. Ferien is used as Sommerferien, which means summer holidays. This is a fixed period of six weeks off set by the government for each of the 16 states. Let's do another example. Ich bin nächste Woche nicht im Büro, weil ich Urlaub habe, which means I won't be in the office next week because I have a week off. 
Here, Urlaub is used. It's a period of time of work that each individual employee can decide to take at different times. Let's do another example with Urlaub. Ich hatte einen tollen Urlaub in Südfrankreich means I had a great vacation in the south of France. In this case, Urlaub means a vacation that an individual took that is unrelated to the government set holidays. An interesting distinction between Urlaub and Ferien is school children and university students have Ferien, but employees have Urlaub. However, in den Urlaub fahren, to go to vacation is for everyone. Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Tschüss, bis zum nächsten Mal. Bye, see you next time. Okay, hey everyone. Today we'll be talking about the five most popular German bands. Rammstein. Rammstein, a hard rock band. Rammstein. So, Rammstein. Rammstein, a hard rock band. Rammstein ist eine international sehr bekannte deutsche hard rock band. Rammstein is an internationally well-known German hard rock band. Tokyo Hotel. Tokyo Hotel. Tokyo Hotel, a rock band. Tokyo Hotel. Tokyo Hotel, a rock band. Tokyo Hotel ist eine deutsche Rockband, die 2001 gegründet wurde. Tokyo Hotel ist eine deutsche Rockband, die 2001 gegründet wurde. Yes, so I remember them. They were very famous when I was a teenager and um, they um, had like all these 13 year old girls fans <laughs> and yeah, they were really crazy about them, but yeah, that's it. <laughs> Die Ärzte. Die Ärzte. Die Ärzte. A punk band. Die Ärzte. A punk band. Die Ärzte sind eine der bekanntesten deutschen punk rock bands. Die Ärzte sind eine der bekanntesten deutschen punk rock bands. Die Ärzte is one of the best known German punk rock bands. Yes, so they're a very uh, long existing too. They came out with this um, very famous song. It's very old. It was called Männer sind Schweine. <laughs> Men are pigs. <laughs> and it went uh, Männer sind Schweine. <laughs> like, yeah, it was, um, they were talking very bad about men. Yeah, they became very famous with it, so. Scorpions. Scorpions. Scorpions, a rock band. Scorpions. Scorpions, a rock band. Rudolf Schenker is das einzige konstante Mitglied der Scorpions. The Scorpions' only constant member has been Rudolf Schenker. Um, I don't know them that well. I didn't even know they were a German band. Modern Talking. Modern Talking, a pop band. Modern Talking. Modern Talking, a pop band. Die sehr bekannte Band Modern Talking besteht aus Dieter Bohlen und Thomas Anders. Die sehr bekannte Band Modern Talking bestand aus Dieter Bohlen und Thomas Anders. The very famous band Modern Talking consisted of Dieter Bohlen and Thomas Anders. Dieter Bohlen is actually uh, one of the judges of um, Deutschland sucht den Superstar, <laughs> which is um, similar to American Idol or the singing competition show. Okay, so these were the five most popular German bands. If you have any German bands that you like, let me know. I'd be very curious about it. Don't forget to check out our website, GermanPod. 101.com. See you in the next video. Bye!